So this is a new segment I'm starting called Rapid Reviews. And what this is going to be is just really a more streamlined version of uh, the reviews that I do on the channel. So probably like under 10 minutes, at least that's the goal. And I figured since this is such a short book, it would be a perfect one to start this series off with. So uh, this one has plenty to say about this book. Hey, what's up, bookworms and budding sacred artists? Mike back to talk Cradle on the channel for the first time with book number one in that series. This is Unsold, uh, released in 2016, the first in, I believe, a 12-book series by Will White. Now, this is probably, without a doubt, since Dresden Files, the most uh, rabid fan base I've encountered in wanting me to read a series that wasn't really on my radar. So much so, they've sent me the first 10 books. I think that's all that's released at this point. So they sent them all to me. So this is really one that I'm reading due to view requests, and I thought that uh, this would be a nice one to kind of debut this uh, this new segment that I got here. So well, this is something called progression fantasy, which is something I've never heard of before. Like, guys, I said, I'm either it's adult fantasy, it's grimdark, or it's YA. That's really kind of where I go with subgenres with fantasy. I don't really get too much into that. But here we go. It's my first kind of foray into it. In fact, I think I believe that uh, progression fantasy, it focuses on uh, character the characters uh, powering up and getting new skills over time. That's really the focus of it. So I was like, okay. Sounds unique enough, but uh, let's go ahead and get into what is this book about, guys? Now, sacred artists follow a thousand paths to power, using their souls to control the forces of the natural world. Lyndon is an unsold, forbidden to learn the sacred arts of his clan. But when faced with a looming fate he cannot ignore, he must rise beyond anything he's ever known and forge his own path. Yes, even the, what is it about? It's going to be a lot shorter now. Like, guys, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk about what I liked first. Now, first up, uh, I like questing. Look, I think as a fantasy fan, questing is just kind of encoded in our DNA. It's something that we love. Us fantasy fans, were all about getting a group together and going out and searching for those ancient relics. And this book does a lot of that. I also like the class structure. It reminded me very much the opening chapter of uh, if Harry Potter had started right when they were at the Sorting Hat. That's what it made me think of, the way they do the classes and what you're, basically what kind of sacred artist you're going to be based off of the reaction to this uh, this water. But I don't get too much into it, guys. But uh, it, it, I really like that. I like that. It was a neat idea. It really off the bat, it showed me, okay, we're going to be doing with different classes and power-ups, stuff like that. And I also do like the power-up, the leveling up, I guess, that these characters have over time. It's like this, you know, what they get told here isn't, doesn't mean that's what you're going to be from, from now on. You, you also have like progression on that, you know, if you're going to be a gold or a jade or an iron or anything like that. Uh, I think that's neat ideas. It's, it's something I'm always going to be in favor of. I have played plenty of RPGs, so that's that stuff that I, I can definitely see myself getting interested into. But with this, is like, I kind of like, okay, uh, this is whatever. Until about the 40% mark, then there's a big twist. Now, this is a twist I really did like because uh, I, I was kind of leaning on that point where I felt like the main character was really just kind of winning at everything. You know, that's something that uh, I think a lot of us fancy fans get kind of sick of seeing, uh, where you just kind of have like a perfect character. Okay, yeah, he's an unsold, but yet he can do everything, right? But this kind of really turns that on his head, and this book goes really crazy science fiction. And that was something I didn't really expect. You tell me this is progression, progression fantasy, and I think we have a real science fiction twist here. But uh, yeah, I was thinking he really was kind of a Gary Stu until that happened. And if you know, you know. But I have to say that the action is quite well done for a book where we don't get a really great explanation, which I'll get back to, of what this magic system is. I'm not really sure I still understand everything about it. In fact, I don't think I understand much at all about it, but I do think that the action is fast-paced and very good. And as far as the pacing goes, this book is fast as a rocket, guys. There is no slowdown in this book at all. It is very, I mean, look at it. It's very slim, very to the point. It's all meat, really. There is no real slowdown or drag in the story at all. So I'm going to have to give it a, a very definite uh, props for that one. For the last one, though, I do have, I got to say, I feel like this is unique. Now, I want you to understand up front, guys, I haven't watched anime. I've only read two manga at this point, And I know that a lot of people will say, oh, this is just like blank, blank, and blank anime. I haven't watched them. So it feels unique to me. I can't think of anything else that feels like this. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, this is just like Dragon Ball or Naruto. Guess what I haven't watched, guys? So I can't really compare it to that. So to me, yeah, I, I like that it feels unique. I can't think of anything else that I've read that feels like this. Now, let's get into what I didn't like, and this is where I might lose some of those super fans. Now, look, I think the character work is shabby. I mean, at best, Lyndon seems to overcome everything for 
reasons. Very much plot armor. Uh, the, he basically has a, a name tag that says main character, so he gets away with a lot of stuff that he usually a uh, regular character wouldn't get away with. I thought that we'd get some more character development out of him when he met Urine, but uh, no, not so much at all. It just kind of continues with... It very much feels like a video game. Hey, you're doing the same thing I am. Let's join forces. Okay, let's go get the, the, the relic. Uh, Serial is just so out of nowhere, I almost felt like Serial was from another book. Like, didn't mean to just kind of hopped into the wrong story. Uh, because she kind of shows up out of nowhere, no explanation of what is going on. And then, like, her side quest, I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what's going on. Now, guys, look, if this story is in media res, I have no problems with that. I mean, I've read seven Malazan books. I'm fine with that. I just don't know if it is. I don't know if it's just the way that he's writing the story is just like, hey, you just kind of go with it. I'm not going to give you any explanation. Okay, that would be a, that would be a choice. Uh, but with this one, I felt like this book could have been about 200 pages longer because I don't feel like he explains anything in this story. Uh, the magic isn't explained. Uh, what happened to this world where we're kind of at doesn't explain. Basically, any world building at all, guys, or character development, he does not do. He does not explain very much of anything, I think. I mean, there's one part where Lennon is reading some old text, but it is very, very to the point and quick. And again, if this wants to just be like a quick, you know, just quick page turn and read, you don't want to bog anyone down with world building stuff, that's fine. But I'm just saying as an old school fantasy fan, that is hard to take, not getting any explanation. Now, again, if this is in media res and he's going to explain these things over time, like if I'm on book four or five and I can look back on this and say, oh, okay, now I get it, then I'll be fine with it. But as just this book alone, yeah, it's kind of a miss for me. The magic really flew over my head, guys. I think I figured out what a remnant is, but I'm not sure. So <laughs> there's that. Look, final thoughts, guys. Look, uh, I know a lot of viewers have told me they didn't think I was going to like this when I said I was starting to read it the other day. They told me, uh, knowing that you, you, you hate anime and manga. I do not hate anime and manga. Now, look, the thing with anime is I don't watch it, guys, because of aesthetics. I don't like the dubbed voices sound ridiculously over the top for me. Uh, the animations, the facial features that they do drive me crazy. It's just stuff I don't like. As far as the story goes, it's never bothered me at all. I have no problems with the storyline at all. So uh, that wasn't something that I was really, really worried about. However, my problem was more, like I said, this book feels like anything that had to do with giving answers or fleshing out the world or the characters, it felt like just got cut out in editing. That's what it felt like to me reading this. It felt like any explanation that we're going to get for anything in this book was just like, yeah, we don't need that because it'll slow the story down. Now, I uh, look very mixed on this, as I expected, dealing with a brand new genre that I've never really touched before. I didn't expect to go in this and just be like, oh my God, I love it. I mean, some have. I mean, um, I was watching my buddy Andrew's Wizardly Reads review right after I finished this, and I was like, well, he absolutely loved it. And I'm just like, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe it's something where people have to watch anime first to really know that this is something they love. Me, I think I'll come around to it, but right now I'm kind of uh, on it. And let me tell you what my biggest concern is. My biggest concern is that this series is going to be nothing but our characters just getting the next power up, just grinding for XP over and over and over again. And we're not going to develop these characters at all or this world. That's my concern right now. If that is what this series is, I don't know that that's something I want to read 12 times. So I do have that concern right now. Look, I like this book enough that I'm going to keep going with the series, obviously. Even if I didn't like that book, guys, I was going to keep going with it anyway because you guys have bought me all these books. And I feel like, hey, this isn't a huge commitment. I read this in a day, you know? It's not a big deal. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am really, really concerned about that going forward. And uh I don't know. This kind of felt like I was reading the script to a Final Fantasy game. And look, guys, I like Final Fantasy. I like playing it. I don't like reading it. You know, uh, this one just, uh, yeah, that's that's not exactly what I'm looking for in my story. So I know a lot of people said, hey, if this is not something you're in, I don't know if this is going to be for you. What I'm saying is, if this is the primary part of it, okay. But I need these characters to be developed somewhat. Much better than they were in this one. So guys, that was my thoughts. My quick, rapid review of Unsold by Will White. Uh, very, like I said, uh, mixed review, obviously, but I will be continuing with Unsold here rather soon because uh, I do want some answers, and I'm hoping that these future books do give me some answers and not just, like, get good, noob. You know, and this is very much based on, like, gaming, so <laughs> that's quite possible that that's what he's telling me to do. So, guys, that was my thoughts. Have you read Unsold? Drop in the comments below and let me know, and I will talk to you guys there.